Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Kingsley Eugene, like um, we've talked over and over. So today we are meeting again on very insightful subject. Okay. So what other things are we going to be talking about today? The main topic of the today is the goals and objectives. And what are your life goals and objectives? But the most important thing is before we go there, we're going to make a revision on the things that we did earlier on. Okay, let's go. The revision today is going to be on the formal and informal words in English. Now, I'm going to be going through a lot of words that we use on our day-to-day -day basis. Okay, a lot of action words that we use on the day-to-day -day basis. So some of these words you know, some of them you don't know. So please stay tuned, take up your pen, take up your writing sheets. Whatever word that you do not know that you want us to explain better, you can write, leave your comment below the video and your, and your questions will be answered, okay? So let's go. Formal words and informal words. Now we say, sorry every time you know like you you do you do something wrong you say i'm so sorry and we we use that word sorry and sorry so but this sorry is informal okay the right way to to apologize is in a formal setting is we say apologize or i demand an apology Okay, you don't say say sorry for what you've done. When you say say sorry for something you've done, it's an informal setting, informal way of talking to people. Now, the right way is you need to apologize for something that you've done if you are in a professional setting, you're working in a professional environment. Okay, so this is really, really crucial. Remember what we said a few days ago about uh, professional settings and and what your social circle, okay? So remember. So if you are in an informal setting, you could use, oh, sorry, okay? Or I apologize in a work setting. So these are the different dynamic between a formal and informal way of apologizing, okay? The next is go up, okay? The word go up is very, very interesting because Go up could mean, uh, in Portuguese, subi. Uh, it also means like to, to do something, like, oh, I want to go up to somewhere, okay? But the word generally, when we say something has gone up, is increase. For example, there have been an increase of dollar, uh, the dollar to reals. So you say, oh my God, dollar has gone up. So people say go up or go up in an informal setting. The right way to say it in a formal environment is say, oh my God, the dollar price, the dollar rate has increased comparing to the reals, okay? So this is a very, very crucial way of saying this. Now we have another word, go down, okay? Go down could be the same as garden, in like people say the same. Or uh, go down to the market, okay? I'm going down to the market or something. That means you're walking to the market. But generally, we we also use this to talk about decrease. Like, oh my God, uh, the people, the rate of people going to the shore has gone down, okay? Or decreased. So in an informal way, we could say what? Decrease. While in a formal way, in an informal way, we could say go down. While in a formal way, we could say what? Decrease. Okay? So next is set up. What is set up? Set up means a lot of things. Set up could be uh, when someone is setting you up something doing something bad or uh, set up would also be um, to set a machine or a computer up. Then set up would also means to establish. So these words are 
informal. When you say set up, set up in what sense? Okay, so I would say, let's say, let's establish a fact. What do we establish to make something known, to make something factual? So that's when we use the word establish. Now, I have another word was look at. Okay, people say, please look at my form or teacher, look at my textbook. Or look at this, okay? Uh, we say look at to tell, to draw someone's attention to something. So it's better in the formal way. We say, please, can you examine this later, boss? Can you examine this um, this letter for a quote? Can you examine this lecture? Can you examine this class? So the best way to use this word is examine in a formal setting. Why you could use look at in a very informal setting? Okay, so now we have another word, blow up. Now, blow up, say, it's very, very, um, very, very, very funny because it goes a lot of ways. We could say someone has blown up, like anger, in a very angry manner, okay, or exploded. Oh my God, my boss was so angry and he exploded. So we could use that way to express when talking or referring to people's emotions. But other way we can also use it is by reason about explosion, like the bomb. Oh my God, the bomb exploded. So instead of saying uh, it blew up, we say it exploded. Because using exploded makes you sound more, um, more enlightened to regards using blow up. Okay. Now, find out. A lot of us use this word find out because um, it explains a lot. We say, please find out uh, if, uh, if, the, if the school is going to work today. Please find out if uh, my, my father is going to launch. So we use find out for a lot of uh, situations. But now, we, the formal way to use this is what? Discover. Can you discover if the boss is going to be around by 6 p.m.? Can you discover the time the meeting will, will take place? So when we use the word discover in a formal setting, it's communicating more, um, a more educated and a more uh, formal way of, uh, formal language you use in a work environment, not just work environment. It could be a dinner gathering, it could be anything that has to do with um, that you're, going to, you're meeting people from every, every area. So. It's really, really important that you you see the difference. So one is to find out, okay, which is find out about anything or discover. Now, other people use this word to talk about um, discovery. Like I made a discovery uh, that the new way to cure the virus is this, for example, okay, because I'm using the virus as a case study because. Um, it's a crucial, it's a day, it's what we have today, it's a problem of today's world, what we are facing today, you understand? So, so now, I found out, okay, when in the past, now, I found out that, da -da 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 -da, whatever I want to say, okay, but it's better to say, I discovered, okay, in the past. So I discovered that my boss would not was not going to be here. I discovered that the bank will not, will not be working maybe by by six p.m. So these are ways we could digress this. This is an informal way. Why this is a very formal way? Okay. Now next, let's go. Bring. Bring, about. Okay. Bring about um, when, what, when we use the word bring about, what are we trying to talk about? We're trying to say something resulted to something. Okay? So, first of all, we'll say what brought about the, the problem in in Campinas, for example, what about what brought about, yeah, what brought about the the coronavirus? Oh, it was caused by uh, people eating bats. 
in China. I don't know if that's accurate, but so we say something bring about is something that caused, what's the cause, the root cause of something. That's the word bring about, okay? So bring about means cause, okay? So in an informal way, we say bring about, and in a very formal way, we say cause. What was the cause of the coronavirus? What was the cause of people shutting down schools? What was the cause of the banks not working? Or we could say, what brought about the situation that the banks were not working? So these are ways we could use the two different dynamics, you understand? So why this is more focused on a formal way of communicating, okay? So before I go further, I am saying, for those of you who do not understand what we are doing, we are focusing on formal and informal words, action words, that we use on our daily basis, okay? What is the essence of the lecture? The essence of the lecture is to help you know what kind of word to use in a very formal setting and what kind of word you need to use in an informal setting, okay? So here are all the informal words and here are all the formal words. So if you do not understand, like I'm seeing uh, silver, uh, I will try to speak a little bit uh, slower so you get to understand what I'm talking about. I'm sorry, uh, just my accent. Um, okay, now I'm going to repeat it, okay? First, put off. Now, when we say put off, we're trying to say something has been kept aside, okay? For example, something that is not being attended to when it should be attended to, okay? Postponed, but in a very formal way of using the word put off, we say postponed or delayed, okay? For example, my class has been postponed or delayed till next Sunday or till next uh, Wednesday or the government has postponed the public holiday or so in this way we're trying to say something has been put off but this is a, an informal way of saying that why this is a very formal way of communicating the same idea okay so now do you have any question regarding to the class the, the things we've done up till now do you understand please if does it make sense? If you don't understand, you could let me know. We are on live. If you understand what has been done, we could go over it again. Do you understand? Okay. We are asking to stop, talk a little bit slower. Slower? Okay. Okay, yeah. I'll try. <laughs> the thing is, it's just my pace, okay? I apologize. My apologies if you could not understand what I'm trying to say. The problem is, I have a different uh, sota, like the Brazilian would say, okay? So I will try my best to speak a bit slower so you can understand, okay? Thank you very much for letting me know, uh, Miss Isabel, okay? Thank you very much. Yeah, the name is very funny. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll do my best to, to slow down, okay? Thank you very much for letting me know, so. Now, for most of you who just came in now, who do not understand what we've been doing, we are talking about uh, the difference between what? The difference between formal and informal way of communicating, okay? What is a formal way of communicating? A formal way of communicating is the right words to use in a work environment. Okay, when you are in a professional environment, your work, your school, uh, a social gathering where you may be a work dinner, where you are buying things, uh, it's different. For example, when you are communicating with clients or in a professional gathering where you meet other people, that's what is what formal means, the formal sentence. 
Why informal means when you're with your friends, when you're talking to your family members or your acquaintances, okay? People you meet um, on your social circle, like uh, your friends from school or your friends' friends, or in a party, balada, that is what informal way talks about, okay? Now, these words on the left side are informal words, okay? Why? The words on this side are formal words, okay? So we use this word on maybe on social media with our friends in a meeting or a party. Do you understand? Why we use this word in a very, uh, in, our, in our schools, uh, in our workplace, in a professional gathering and meeting, okay? These are on this side. Now, rack up. The word rack up means to get things, for example, to get things together. So it could be uh, to, I want to rack up um, uh, 50,000 likes, for example, on, on Instagram. Okay? So why the the formal way of using the same word is accumulate, okay? Uh, to accumulate something. We could also use wrap up for, oh my God, um, um, Mark Zuckerberg uh, wrapped up a lot of money from Facebook, okay? It means Mark Zuckerberg uh, got a lot of money from Facebook app, okay? But the, if you want to communicate, communicate the same idea in a formal setting, we say accumulate, okay? Accumulate. He made a lot of money. Oh my goodness. Mark made a lot of money from Facebook. So he accumulated a lot of money, okay? So now we have another word, make up. Now, in other words, people say make up. Makeup could be could mean two things. Makeup could mean uh, for women, you buy your makeup products for your face. So you say it's a makeup. Okay. Now makeup could also mean qualities of something. I could say what is the makeup of a man, or what is the makeup of a woman. So it could also mean the quality of something. Now, but in this case. We want to say makeup as in making up stories. Okay? Now, to make up stories means to lie about something, to say something that is not true. That is what to make up stories is all about. Okay? So, when we say something is not true, we are what? Making up stories about something. Okay? For example, People make up stories about a lot of things every day, okay? So, in a formal setting, the same word means fabricate, okay? To fabricate lies, to fabricate fallacies about people, okay? So, we say to fabricate. Someone fabricated a story about something or someone. So, in a very formal setting, we use the word fabricate, okay? Now, Stand for. What do you stand for in life? Do you stand for the truth? Stand for is akrejita. Okay, when you when you akrejita something, when you have faith in something, when you when you say, okay, I am a Christian, for example, uh, I stand for Christianity. Or I say, I love humanity. I stand for human race. So, what do you stand for? So in an informal way, we use the word stand for. Why? In a very formal way, we say what? Represent. For example, if you're a teacher or a student of microcam, you say, I represent microcam, okay? Or I am representing microcam on something or something. So you are standing for microcam, okay? Now, next, Let's go to leave out. Leave out means to omit. What does the word omit? Omit is when 
you delete something, like you put you pour, you point the delete button, like you don't understand something, then you omit it. That's what the word leave out means. So we say leave out a detail, leave out something. It mean, means the same thing as word omit. Okay? Then we go. Point out. Point out uh, is to talk about something. For example, point out or indicate. Now the word means indicate in a very formal setting. So what we are pointing out, we are pointing out um, a detail or an issue or something that are called. So we say point out. So I want to point out that uh, women should be paid more than men, for example. Or I want to point out the fact that the government is not doing enough on what they should be doing. Okay. So in that respect, we mean to indicate. Okay. So in this respect, it means what? To indicate something is not functional. Okay. Now, go against. Go against is to oppose. Um, go against is what something you do not agree with. When you don't agree with something, it means you are going against that thing. For example, I don't agree with um, with people getting married on the gray on 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 the age. So we say I am going against this subject. Okay, for example, or I say oh I oppose that women should not receive equal salary to men. So this is in a very formal setting, we use the word oppose, while in an informal setting we say go against. But the same words, it means the same thing, just different situation. Okay. Now, now we have the word need to. Okay. Um, need to is the things you want to do that are necessary for you to do. So I could say in a very informal setting I could tell my friend I need to go to the party or I need to go to the bank. Okay. Uh, this is something that you need to do. Okay. Or I need to start study harder for example as in for English students like a lot of people saying oh God I don't understand this. I don't know how to do this. So or, so you say, okay, I need to study English harder. I need to, I need to set a timetable for myself so that I can understand how to study better. So this word, need to, in a very formal way, we would say required. Okay? I am required to study for a presentation. I am required to study for a promotion or a test. So we use the same, we communicate the same idea, but differently. Okay? Now, here, think about, we use the word think about a lot, especially um, during our meetings, or uh, when we are communicating with our colleagues. We say, don't worry, I'm going to think about it. But the thing is, thinking about it is wrong. Okay? When someone presents you an idea, you don't think about it, you consider. Okay, you consider in a formal setting. You say, I will consider. I will give me some minutes. Let me consider. Uh, let me take some moments to consider what's going on. Okay? So we could also say, uh, think about it in a very, maybe with your friends, your colleague, your spouse. So don't worry, I'm going to think about it. Just give me some days, I'm going to think about it. Okay? I'm not saying that you could not use anyone. Of course, you can use any of them. But well, the thing is, when you use this, you sound formal in a very formal setting. When you use this, you sound very informal. But they communicate the same idea. Okay? Now, sorry. Get. Okay, we use the word get a lot. Um, get means obtain. I want to get a degree, I want to get a certificate. They all mean what? To obtain something. Okay? What are you obtaining? Like uh, in a very formal way or in a company, I say, oh, so can I obtain the, the list of, of today's um, maybe um, agenda? Okay, can I obtain it from you, please? Uh, so people can also say get. But well, most of the time, people use the word get 
do not understand the difference between a formal and informal sentence. So in an informal sentence, please get me some water, please. Uh, so we use the word get a lot in a, an informal sentence, okay? Now, go. I'm going to go free, livre. That's the word free. Free, we could use in this sense, say, the prisoner was free. Okay, so the word could also be release. So in a very formal setting, we use release. So the prisoner was released. So instead of saying free, we say release. It's communicate the same idea, but different organization, different setting, different environment. So in a very formal environment, it's good for us to say released, okay? Now, we get this word, get on someone's nerves. I'm going to pause. If you do not understand what the word get on someone's nerves, what is the meaning in Portuguese, sorry? To get on someone's nerves, to make someone angry. Uh, Annoying. Uh, uh, incomodar. Incomodar, irritar. Yes. Okay. Irritar. Irritar. So, puto. <laughs> so, this word, to get on someone's nerves, means irritar in Portuguese. Okay? Irritar, to make someone angry. You say, oh my god, my boss is getting on my nerves. Okay. Deixando bravo. Uh, deixa me bravo, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. No so that is what the word means, okay? Irrita. Now, but in a formal setting, we don't say, we don't use this. We say bother, okay? Oh my God, you are bothering me. My boss is bothering me. It means the same thing as irrita, just a different setting, okay? So now we have ring up. Hello, who is ringing you? Okay, ring up uh, my friend. I'm going to ring up my friend later. This English is not common, especially here in Brazil. Okay, people use the word come, call, chama, is it? Call. Chama, ligar. Ligar, okay. So now the word means to ring up. Okay, to ring up means to call someone, chama, okay, ligar. Okay. Please call Michael for me. Okay, but uh, in very European, a lot of European countries use the word ring up. Can you ring up uh, Jessica for me, please? Okay, so this is an informal way of using the same word. Now, show up. Show up uh, in America, it's a very popular way of communicating. People use the word show up. So you decided to show up. What does it mean in Portuguese? Aparecer, chegar. Yeah, aparecer, chegar. So the word show up means what? To arrive. Okay? So you decided to arrive. Okay? Or we could say, he showed up late in passar. In the past tense, say, he or she showed up late. Okay? Or he or she arrived late. Okay? We just put D here and ED here. Okay, now, let's go. Now guys, I'm going to pause. And today, let's talk about something very, very important. Uh, we've done a bit revision on the goals and objectives. Um, a bit revision on the formal and informal words. Now, pardon me please, today I'm going to be talking about something very, very important. Especially if you're a student or a professor, uh, this is very, very important, guys. Now, watch this. Goals and objectives. Now, goals and objectives is very important. What is goals and objectives in Portuguese? Uh, metas e objetivos. Sim. Metas e objetivos. Sorry, pardon my Portuguese. <laughs> okay, guys. Now, it is extremely important you know your goals and objectives. For example, 
Have you ever asked yourself, what is my goal for living? What do I want to become? You are studying English, but why are you studying English? Uh, now, it's not enough to say, I want to become a doctor. It's not enough to say, um, I want to become a, a world-renowned um, physician. Because there is a difference between desire and action. So, the desire is something you want to be. For example, you can say, oh, medical. Mas, é um decision. You need to take action for you to get there. Without an action, you cannot get there. You understand? That is the, the difference between goals and objectives. Okay? Now, first of all, first of all, what's that, sorry? It's not just they're saying who's starting can understand. Who, uh, quem está começando no inglês não consegue tentar fazer entender direito. Okay. Está um pouco avançado. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I really, really, I'm really, really, really sorry. Mr. Eugene <laughs> Kingsley Rules. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I'm doing my best to step down a bit so that I could, um, I could explain it in a very um, uh, small way. <laughs> but there is no way. I don't know how to bring up my level of English. But I'm going to try. To speak, eu vou tentar, gente, falar mais devagar, entendeu? Desculpa, gente, eu não consegue fazer menos do que isso, deixa. Mas eu vou tentar falar mais devagar, explicar melhor. Por favor, não fica bravo, tá? <laughs> Obrigado. Now, let's go, ok? So, goals and objectives is different or are different from what? Are different from desejo, desire, desejo, okay? Desire is, I want to become a doctor. I want to become a pilot. I want to become a nurse. I want to become a teacher, do you understand? So these are all desires, do you understand? But listen and listen carefully. Without setting a proper goals and objective, there is no way you will get there, okay? So today, you and I are going to be going through the things we need to do to get there, okay? First of all, let's go. Life goals, hmm? meta de vida, right? Yeah. Life goals are a purpose or a main reason for living. So what is your purpose, Jivida? What is the main reason why you are studying English? What is the main reason why you wake up every day? This is very, very important. Reflect. Ask yourself, why am I studying English? Why am I studying Informatica? Why am I studying this? Why do I wake up every morning? What motivates me to become better? Okay? This is very, very important. Because if you do not have this sorted out, there is no way you will get there. Okay? Because there is a difference between I want to become a doctor, I want to help people, I want to come, I want to become rich, like people say, you, you can say riquíssimo, for example. But Como que você vai ser riquíssimo? Tem um pedaço que você tem que seguir. You have, to, you have to follow rule by rule by rule by rule, step by step, for you to get there. Okay? This is why goals, life goals, having a very profound set of life goals is highly, highly important. Okay? Now, let's go. Some of the life goals people have for men or women is marriage and family. 
People want to get married. A lot of women want to get married. A lot of men want to get married. They said, okay, you can kaza. I want to get married. So this is some people's life goal. Meet a very rich husband or a very rich <laughs> wife, get married. Now, some people say career passion and personal satisfaction. You can say GNHG, EBM. I want to become very rich. I want to become um, very, very, very rich, very known. These are people's goals. Now, people say financial stability. Okay? You can, I want to have financial stability, stability. I don't want to have to work two jobs to, to leave. I don't want to be working, uh, I don't want to stress myself anymore, okay? So this is the reason why people set a lot of gold, okay? So now, financial stability is one of the thing, reason why people use goals and objectives. Now we have service and social responsibility. People want to become president. People want to become, um, this was going to say uh, president, this was going to say minister, this was going to say, okay, they want to do something. They want to become, they want to give back to the society. So these are some people's goals and objectives. Okay, let's go back. Tips on how to achieve your life goals okay tips on how to achieve your life goals now the following tips i want you to bring out your pen and paper and write them down because they are very very important okay so let's go one be specific seja direto seja specific Eu quero ser médico. It's not tomorrow, você fala. Eu quero ser um pilot de avião. Amanhã você fala. Eu quero ser um professor. No. Be specific. What you want with your life, you need to want. Be specific. Be specific with what you want. Be specific with how you want to go about it. Know that, okay, isso, vida é o único. So, eu quero ser isso, eu vou ficar feliz o resto da minha vida fazendo isso. Ok? So, this is what the word being specific means. Ok? So, be specific with what you want. So, now, bring out your paper, guys. What do you want? O que você deseja? O que você vai ficar feliz fazendo o resto da vida? Isso é muito importante, porque vida é único. Não tem outra. So, what will you do? What will you be doing for you to get that? So, you need to want be specific. Next. Measure your progress. Okay. Watch this. You want to become a medical doctor. How do you become a medical doctor? Okay. What are the years people take to study in medical school? What are the processes you need to get there? These are the things you need to measure. You need to write them down Say, okay, first I need to get a degree, I need to go to medical school, I need to specialize in maybe one of the medical specialties. So you need to measure how well, how far, how great you want to become. You need to measure your progress, measure the amount of things you want to gain. You need to measure the success, you need to measure the route, you need to measure that 
everything that you want to do are in line with what you want to get. Because without measuring your goals and objectives, there is no way you will arrive there. So it's highly important you measure your goals and objectives. So you know you want what you want to become, but now you need to measure it. So I need this and that. You write it down. I need to go to the university. I need to get a degree. I need to go to medical school. I need to specialize in this and that. So this will help you have organized mentality of what you want. So it has gone from that stage of desiring to implementation. So you what? You write down your specific goal. You measure how long it will take for you to achieve that goal. Okay? So when measuring, you ask yourself a few of these questions. Will I be successful doing this? Do, do I have the patience to wait this long? Because patience is a very, very key thing when setting your goals. So you need to know if you'll be successful at it, if you have the patience to wait for the goal, because this is what all the measuring entails. Okay? So when you set a goal, you measure the goal, then we come to the next phrase. Be realistic. Sija here. Don't say, uh, I, will, I will speak English in two months. It's impossible. For example, people say, oh, I'm going to speak English in one month. It's not possible. Or you say, I'm going to be a, a, the director in a year. No. Be realistic. Being realistic is you knowing the things you can do and the things you cannot do. You being real with yourself. For example, one of the things you need to know about being realistic is this. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Onde se já seu ponto de fracos e ponto fortes? If you don't have, if you don't know this area, how would you become realistic? A lot of people make a real, unrealistic expectations, okay? Make set unrealistic expectations for themselves. A lot of people set unrealistic expectations for what they want. And what happens? What happens is it becomes a problem because they are not able to reach their goal, they become frustrated, okay? So when you don't set realistic goals, when you don't think about your strength, for example, well, one of your strength could be, I am patient, and your weakness could be time management, for example. So you need to know what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are for you to what, achieve your goal. So being realistic is very, very important. Now, can you, can, you, can you respond to the test in Portuguese? You can respond to the, you can respond to how? The lady there? Yes, please. Ela está falando que falar a Parma, ela não consegue acompanhar falando inglês. Okay, well, you, there, I, there's nothing I can do about that, so, um, I hope we will have some, some English class, uh, palestra in English, in English, in Portuguese. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, guys, let's go back to what we were talking about. Now, the next is set a deadline. I'm sorry, for people who could not understand English, um, the English I'm using, um, next, uh, next class is going to be divided in Portuguese and English. So we're going to have someone to treat the Portuguese part and me to talk about the English part. So um, I'm sorry if you're, not, if you're not able to understand the way I talk. Um, I hope that next lesson becomes more interesting because if I think part to Portuguese, it's part to English. Entendeu? So that's how we're going to do next class. Now, back to our topic. Set a deadline. Setting a deadline is very, very important. Okay? You know your goal. You've measured 
your goal, how long, what are the things you need to achieve. Now, you've been realistic about the things you can change and the things you cannot change. Then, you need to set a deadline. So, by setting a deadline, what do you do? Você tem que criar três, how do you say it? Pedastros. Três passos. Três passos. Okay. You need to create what? Três passos. Okay. One, short term goal. Intermediate. What you want to achieve now. Okay. Now, medium term goal. Short term goal could be uh, in two years, I would know how to speak English. For example. Okay. That's a short term goal. Now, medium term goal is say, I want to use my knowledge of speaking English to become the the HR director in IBM or Samsung, for example. So that's what a medium term goal. Now a long term goal could be 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Where do you hope to see yourself? Do you hope to see yourself being financially successful? Do you hope to see yourself being becoming uh, very uh, owning your own company? Okay, se já um CEO, se uma empresa própria. So these are all the things that we need to see. So a short term goal, medium term goal, and a long term goal. So creating a deadline for each helps you to control your goals. Okay, it helps you to control your goals. You control your goals, you control the things that happen, and you control all the steps. And also helps you to evaluate the things that you've done are they corresponding with where you want to be or not so these are all the few things you need to put into account okay now let's go next now you viewers what are your goals What are your goals? Do you want to become a director? Do you want to become a CEO? So now it's time for you to reflect on your own life, on the things you want. Reflect on where you are now. Avaliar onde você está agora. Fazer. And then reflect. Onde que você queria estar? Where do you want? Am I correct? That Portuguese. Yeah. Yeah. So, where do you want to be in the future? No futuro. Where do you want to become? Onde você quer estar no futuro? What do you want to achieve? So, these are ways we need to think about it. Okay? So, where am I today? Onde que eu estou agora? No? Onde que eu estou agora? Now, where do I want to be tomorrow? Okay? So, these are ways for you to evaluate your goals, for you to set your goals. Now, weaknesses, we've talked about that. Now, let's talk about English. <laughs> English for most of us is a, a desire. We want to know how to speak English very well. But to speak English very well needs dedication from you as a student. You need to what? Dedicate yourself to the things that will help you know how to speak English. Like I see a lot of people complain, I cannot understand the professor. I, I don't know how to, I, I have difficulties in listening. I have difficulties when someone is talking. Now, the reason why you are having difficulties is not your fault. The reason is you've not set your own goals, your own language learning goals. You as a student need to set a realistic language learning goals because the truth is coming to school 100% of the time will not do the magic. You as a student need a res to take a responsibility or you as a parent or, or your parent 
taking a responsibility in your own education. Because education, it's not one-sided. Né? É, educação não é só um lado, não. Só o professor tem que ser perfeito dentro de aula. Eu não tenho que fazer nada. Não. Você tem que fazer mais. Entendeu? Você tem que tomar, você tem que prestar atenção. You need to pay attention, you need to invest in your own self-learning. Do you understand? This is why it is really, really important. So, now, where are you having problems? You say, I'm having difficulties in, let's say, grammar. Have you set your goals? Have you, have you talked to a professor about it? For a professor to help you create maybe um, a plan, a study plan for you? So, these are the questions you need to answer. I'm having difficulties listening, for example. Okay? You say, I have difficulties listening. I found listening very, very difficult. Now, listening is very, very difficult. Even uh, for me, that is a stranger, I found it very difficult to understand Portuguese. Now, uh, I understand quite all right. But, are you listening to music in English? Are you watching new movies in English? So, what are you doing on your own part to improve your listening ability? Because you need to what? Invest time. That few hours we have in the classroom is not sufficient for you to learn everything you need to learn. I have a problem, my biggest problem uh, with, uh, with students is even in the school premises. The student does not want to use English. He or she is using Portuguese. So how do you improve your speaking if you cannot practice your what your speaking with other students, your other your other learners in your classroom? So we need to understand, student, we need to understand guys that the teacher is not a magician. The teacher will not do abracadabra and you know how to speak. You need to do your own part, okay? So you need to know what I need. I am having problems with this difficulty. You go seek for counsel. You ask the teacher, say, Professor, por favor, me ajuda aqui. Que eu tenho que fazer para melhorar essa ponto? Entendeu? So you go, the professor goes and organizes, okay? You need to read, da, 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 da. you need to study, da, 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 da. so you watch, you go home, you don't keep the book, you open the book when you get home, you devote time to study. If it's listening, it's okay. Uh, which musician do I like? I like maybe, for example, Rihanna. I like um, uh, Taylor Swift. So, okay, you listen to Taylor Swift and you put lyrics in English or Portuguese. So, you're listening, you are seeing what the lyrics says. Then, you, over time, you remove the lyrics and start doing just the listening because there is no way you would improve without you investing your time in these things. So, so it's really, really important, guys, okay? Because we need to do our part. It's not easy, I know. It's not just, it's not one person's job to, to improve your English learning. You as a student, você tem que ser responsible para seu aprendizado, tá bem? Você tem que é, colocar tempo para aprender. Porque não, não, não vale a pena só deixar tudo em sala de aula. Então, quando você chegar em casa, o que você tem que fazer? Você tem que também que comunicar com os uh, alunos, com seus amigos de inglês. Praticar, gente. Praticar. Porque, if you don't practice, how would you learn? So, it is really, really important that we keep this in our mind. Okay? So, let's go down. Now, sorry, before I go down, I want to talk about reading. When you have a problem with pronunciation, don't say, deixa pra lá. Call the professor, say, professor, eu não consegue ler essa letra. Por favor, me ajudar. Because a lot of people say, vocês entendem? Sim. No. Fala com o professor dentro de aula. Professor, por favor, essa palavra é difícil para mim é, pronunciar. Como faz? 
Entendeu? Ela, ah, ok. Você, ok. The word is tal. Ok? Você repetir. Oh, you can also record it. Record it. Coloca no seu celular. Então, lá. The word is go. Oh, go. Ok? You put it. So, this is the way you can also practice. Or, during the lesson, during the lesson, when you are in the classroom, you could put your phone on recording to record the class activity. Then when you go home, you play the, the class activity on your record and listen to everything that happened in the class. This is a way for you to what? To do proper revision. Okay? So, let's go. Next. Now, vocabularies. We're going to be talking about the vocabularies. Vocabularies, it's very, very important because the, the, the problem is not you not knowing what to say. As vezes, você sabe que, que você quer falar in English, mas você não, não conhece a palavra, entendeu? So this is why vocabulary is extremely important. How do I say extremely in Portuguese? Extra, extremamente. Extremamente. Qual a palavra? Extremely. Extremely, é? Extremely. Ok? So, extremely. So, vocabulary is extremely important in English. Because without vocabularies, you cannot what? You cannot move forward. So, you need vocabularies for you to what? Improve your English speaking. So, always look at the vocabularies at the end of each lesson. Always study the vocabularies. How do I say... Um, uh, it. How do I say this word, professor? So always look for vocabularies because for you to grow, for you to become bigger, for you to know how to speak English with easy, with fluency, with calm, with gentleness, you need to know a lot of English vocabularies. Okay? So vocabularies are extremely, extremely important. Now, let's go. Reading books, gente, <laughs> it is important. You see, a lot of the students, what they do, I myself I was guilty when I was in school. When I get home, chegar em casa, deixa o livro. Até a próxima aula. Não dá, gente. Você quer falar inglês bem? Você quer falar, eu consigo entender tudo que eu estou falando? Você tem que abrir essa livro em casa. You read, read, read. All the words you do not understand. What? You mark them. You mark them. You come to the next class. Professor, eu não entendi isso. Ah, nossa, essa palavra, nossa, professor, que é isso? Como pronuncia isso? Without this, there is no way. You need to do what? Do your own part. There is no way to put to think that the, the two times you are, the two hours you spend in the classroom is enough to explain everything. No, it's not it's not like that. Then you go home, you keep your book, then the next one says, Eu não entendi isso. Como? Como que você vai entender? Se você não colocar tempo para fazer seu parte, você tem que estudar em casa. You need to study at home. So, one of the greatest problems is Pirigiza. A gente prefere assistir um filme no Netflix ou ficar no Facebook fazendo outra coisa, entendeu? Mas tem que ter a unidade, ok? 20 minutos para estudar, 20 minutos para assistir Netflix, ou tal, tal, para bater papo com amigos. But you need to do what? You need to be very, very focused. Because you want to know how to speak English better. So, reading helps you what? Help improve your vocabularies naturally. When you start reading on your own, you read two words today. Next, next week you read three words. This will help improve your vocabularies naturally. Listening. Listening to music, listening to lyrics, listening to a lot of things, a lot of things you can listen to. Go on YouTube. When you use your phone, you go on YouTube, spend two minutes listening to 
to an English lecture, or you type on, on Google, then now, there's a lot of ways you can learn by yourself. You can also go on Spotify listing. You go on YouTube, you say music with lyrics. You see a lot of music, guys. So you need to invest your time doing things that are positive. Speaking, be confident. Okay, most of us tem medo para falar, mas por que você tem medo para falar? Você está falando com outro aluno, você está sala com outro aluno que está lá com, com aprender com você. Então você tem que deixar isso. Ah, when I came to Brazil, quando eu vim para cá, faz muito difícil, entendeu? Mas eu consegue, fala qualquer jeito, joga para lá. Você vai chegar, entendeu? Não dá para ter medo. Joga, não importa como que você mistura, não é correto, tá, tá, tá. Joga tudo, mistura tudo, deixa medo para lá. Só que isso é muito importante para você falar, só, entendeu? So, qualquer coisa, só falar, entendeu? So, hoje, so from now, você vai prometer ser mesmo aqui. Eu vou deixar medo para falar, quando eu estou dentro de aula, eu vou jogar qualquer coisa para palavras, eu vou falar no qualquer jeito. É trabalhar professor para correr de você, como falar corretamente dentro de sala. It's the work of the professor to tell you how to do it. But it's your own part, it's your own duty to speak. Ok? Some people say, no, 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 no. Você tem que deixar isso. Se você não consegue falar dentro de uma sala, como que você vai conseguir falar fora de sala? Então, você tem que pô, sabe falar primeiro dentro de sala. So you need to do what? You need to practice. Confident, build momentum. Hum? Momentum de falar, confidence de falar. Fala qualquer jeito que você quer. Nada, nada vai acontecer. Entendeu? So, Promise yourself that from now on, you're going to try harder to what? Speak English in the classroom, okay? So it's really, really important. Now, let go. Okay. Now, why are you learning English? A lot of people, a lot of us, uh, we're learning English because of um, we want to become better. We want to improve our stand. We want to get a better job. So we want to become known for something. So we're learning English because muitas pessoas têm diferentes reasons que eles estão aprendendo inglês. Quero ter trabalho melhor, quero ter vida melhor, quero viajar, quero. Mas tudo isso é importante, gente. Mas você tem que escrever isso e colocar no seu celular, screen saver. You make it on your screen saver. Say, oh, my reason for learning English is I want to get a job with Samsung. You put it there. So this will motivate you. You need to stay motivated. This will motivate you. It motivates you to wake up every day, go out there, and what? Go and study. So what is your reason for learning English you that is watching? So you need to what? Have that self-motivation that will help you go out there and become better. Do you understand? So this is highly, highly important that you know the reason why you are studying English. So when you put that reason on your phone to remind you every day, this motivates you to become better, okay? So, eliminate, eliminate, eliminate uncertainties. What is eliminate uncertainties? Eliminate uncertainties, you, você está dentro de aula, você está usando o seu celular. Todo tempo, eu chamava a pessoa no WhatsApp. Oh, ah, é online. O professor é muito boring. O professor é chateado. Mas como que você vai conseguir entender? Se você não deixa o celular e tenta para entender. So, primeiro a gente tem que tomar, mudar a nossa atitude. A gente tem que mudar a nossa atitude como a gente faz as coisas. Porque não tem como você ficar fazendo a mesma coisa e você quer outro resultado. É impossível, gente. 
you need to take responsibility. Você tem que tomar a atitude que está lá por dentro da sala, você desligar seu celular ou concentrar na aula de professor. Então, você nota as coisas que você não consegue fazer e falar com o professor. Fala, professor, não consegui entender isso, você consegue é, falar melhor. Mas isso não é que aconteceu. Às vezes, a pessoa fica chamada muito tempo, chamado todo o tempo no celular, então a pessoa fala, professor, não entende o que aconteceu, você consegue repetir, isso não é bom, gente. Você está atrapalhando a aula, entendeu? Você tem que respeitar as pessoas lá, respeitar o seu professor, né? pegar tempo, aproveita o tempo que você está dentro de sala, dentro de aula de, de, de ensino. Então você tem que saber que eu estou aqui para aprender porque eu quero viajar, eu quero ser, ficar melhor no meu. Tudo isso é importante, entendeu? So, it's highly important, ok? That you do this. Next. So, guys, develop self knowledge. Hum, já falar sobre isso, mas let me just say it again. Develop self-knowledge. Developing self-knowledge is what? Improving yourself by yourself. Go home and study. Go home, procurar um link para aprender melhor. Só a aula não consegue fazer tudo para você, entendeu? Você tem que estudar no seu tempo próprio, entendeu? That's what self-knowledge means. Now, now, how do you learn best? Now, this is very important. How do you learn best? Because over time, dentro de aula, você não consegue aprender tudo. That is why it is important quando você chega em casa, para você abrir o livro e estudar. Porque você já conhece você, você sabe como você aprende melhor. Então, você usa essa coisa. Você que a gente aprende continuous, present continuous hoje. Você ir para lá, pegar com present continuous na internet, estudar para você melhor. Entendeu? This is how we can say how do you learn best. Now, keep a record. Keeping a record is fazer, uh, doing uh, something like a timetable, agenda, just to them. Okay? You keep a record. Say, okay, today I'm going to study Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, dia livre. Okay? So you have a record. But the most important thing is that you need to what? Put a habit. You need to have the habit of doing something. Okay, this is highly, highly important. Okay, guys, thank you very much. If you, if you've been watching up to this angle, now we're going to talk about the vocabularies that was used during this video. Okay, life field. Now, please, I want you to pay attention because I'm going to be telling you the vocabularies. You could write them down and let us go through the videos. And you can watch the videos because they'll be downloaded there below. Okay? Now, vocabularies. Number one, goals. The meaning of goal means the, ta the targets that you want to reach. Meta. You can just say president. Voila! So, you need what? Okay? So, the targets you want to reach is what? Your goals. Okay? Now, objectives is pedastos, as pedas, as spa. How do I say it? Steps. The steps, I know, but the important is espaços que você tem que andar para chegar lá. Porque nada aconteceu assim. No. Nada aconteceu mágico. Tudo aconteceu na mágico, não dura gente. <laughs> it doesn't last. So, anything that happens who would not last, okay? So, we follow the we follow those steps. This is our objective for you to get to your goal. Now, next. Improve. The word improve means how to get better and even more and more. Improve. Melhor. 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 Seja melhor. Todo dia. Todo noite. So this is what improve means. Okay? So you are being, you are improving your step, you are improving your English, you are improving your speaking. So the word improve is to get better. Or better, como americano fala. <laughs> better, okay? So, we could say, to get better or better, okay? Now, let's go. Mm -hmm. Lack. Lack. Oh, lack is a kind of shortage or deficiency or a weakness. Ponto fraqueza. Mm. 
This is what lack means, okay? When you lack something, it means something you say no pursue, you say no thing. Oh, I don't I like the ability to speak English very well. Miles, it's not a problem because you can speak English very well. All you need is to, indicate, to dedicate yourself to speaking English. Dedicate yourself to studying and improving yourself. So with the things you learn in school, then you come back home and teach yourself and you get them. Like that. Very easy. Okay? Now let's go. Knowledge, conhecimento, potential. Knowledge means what? Quantity of information that can be kept. So knowledge could be measured. You could say my knowledge in English is lower than my professor knowledge. Okay? So knowledge could be measured. People have no more than more. So the amount of information you have makes you knowledgeable. Okay? Now, please guys, before I go, let's talk. Thank you very much for your patience. Que eu agradeço todos vocês pela sua paciência. A uh, uh, próxima aula a gente vai melhor do que isso. A gente vai fazer melhor do que isso. Muito obrigado. Uh, God bless you and cuidado, tá? Todo mundo tem cuidado. Lavar seu mal, usar álcool. Uh, não, quando a pessoa fala <risos> Entendeu? Isso é muito, muito importante, gente. Muito obrigado, beijo pra tudo, até mais. Tchau, tchau.